Week 17, Cycle 1, Earth Science. We continue on. Um, our verse of the semester, Psalm 24, 1, says, The earth is the Lord's, and all the fullness thereof. Um, and today's, um, this week's science experiment really makes me think of that. Because again, we as believers get all of our foundational truths. Um, the truth is from the biblical point of view. And in today's experiment, we're going to be able to offer some little nuggets of truth to kiddos um, and maybe to yourself that you didn't know fully. Or um, as I get older, the more I, I research things to try to explain things to my kids, like why things happen or why whatever, and it challenges my own faith. Um, and today is an example where we can all learn together if you didn't already know all this. We are learning about rock bridges. And so, first of all, I would, um, again, Nicole Liam, I gave my tutors these um, pictures, which are just um, examples of arches and naturally occurring rock bridges, which is what we're talking about today. So, I would start by just defining what a rock bridge is, show some pictures so kids have an idea, maybe see if anybody has ever seen a rock bridge in real life, um, or arches, um, some of them are called naturally occurring arches when they're not over a thing like a bridge. And um, so identify what they are, talk about how do you think these natural bridges stand up like that? Why don't you think they just collapse there in the middle where it's kind of weak? What, what are they made of? Well, again, let's review. We should know by now what are the layers of the earth and what are the types of rocks. Um, and as we can see through rock bridges and in the definition themselves, they're made of rocks. Um, and over time and or from a specific event, rocks were compounded together and pressed together and water, wind, um, ice, freezing glaciers um, carved out or formed an opening in, um, in these particular formations. And so today we're going to build a rock bridge and talk about how it stands um, and how they're made and so forth. So to do this, I've asked directors, I've asked my tutors to bring a whole bunch of books. Um, the books need to be similar in size and weight. Um, reason being, what you're gonna do for that actual experiment is build a, your very own rock bridge. Dun, dun, dun. So you're gonna have two chairs to lay out. You're gonna start the first book at the corner of each chair. And then each one coming up is just gonna be a little farther out, a little farther out until you can make that um, com um, thing in the middle. You can bring it all together in the middle. So you wanna look at your rock bridge after you make it um, and see you know, what's important. What do you notice? How do you think this is sticking together? Why is it not falling apart? Are there any theories or ideas? Um, and you can talk about too, you know, what's, what do you notice about the two sides? What would happen if I moved one farther apart? Would that change anything? What if it kind of gets lopsided? Um, can anyone in your class do a back bend? Uh, and you can see their hands and their feet and their body looks similar. Why do they not collapse if they're flexible? They're in the middle. And so I can actually move this out a little bit what would happen if I pushed all of these back? Uh, and so you can play around with your rock bridge a little bit to see what you can do, but yet it stays balanced with that. Just because um, it's cool to look at. And then if you have time at the end, you can take it down and, um, and you should have time because we're just doing this one today. Have, um, have the kids experiment with different ways. You know, what if one side jutted out a whole bunch and the other side just barely did? Uh, what if you moved them really close together? How far apart can you stretch them before they fall? And um, to play around with your rock bridge that way, your book bridge. So what's happening here, we analyze our results. So ours staying nice and balanced there. 
even though it's not perfectly symmetrical at this point. What's happening if you were to put, let me show you this again. If you were to imagine an imaginary line coming from this end right in the middle all the way over like a rainbow to the other side, this is called our center of gravity. So the center of gravity is that imaginary rainbow line and it distributes the weight to the two founding sides. So as pressure comes down from above, the wind, the rain, the hail, the everything from natural elements comes down, the pressure is pushed to the sides and that's called the center of gravity. And that's why that is able to hold. Now, over time, erosion does happen. Well, def what is erosion? Erosion is the wearing away of rocks. That can happen, again, as there's little cracks in that bridge. The water goes down, freezes, and expands that crack, and then melts and thaws out. Next year, it happens again, and you can get bigger cracks. And so we see today some of these large structures collapsing, um, sometimes often when nobody's around, because depending on where they're at. Um, but we see that destruction process happening in our lifetime. Now, the cool thing about rock bridges and natural occurring arches, there's small ones and there's huge ones. Um, and again, in our lifetime, we can see the destruction and the process of those happening now. What we don't see are huge ones being formed right now. So the secular point of view is that over thousands and millions of years, um, water and erosion and things have carved out this rock bridge or um, have carved out these rock arches which don't even have water under them. Um, they are just a naturally occurring side arch that'll have, um, I don't have a great picture of that, um, but they're just like bridges, except they're to the side and they're these huge arches um, that still use that scientific principle of the center of gravity to distribute the weight that's to them. Um, but there's no water occurring under them. There's nothing like that. Um, and so it kind of questions this idea um, from a biblical standpoint makes more sense um, that the large arches and bridges were formed after the retreating of the water of the great flood that's documented in Genesis. And so the world was flooded. There was a pretty quick retreating of water which would have done a pretty extensive and fast erosion process, creating these huge, large bridges and arches. Um, there's small ones now still occurring. You'll, you can find that. We can see they're being built over time in our lifetime and see them torn down through this erosion process. But the large ones, by the time it took thousands um, some people say at least 70,000 years for some of the bigger ones, um, up to millions of years. By the time that erosion actually took place, it would not stand. The whole rock itself would not stand. And so it doesn't make sense that it took that long. Number one, if there's water not present in that current place. Um, and two, if the very time that it took for it to even form, it would be destructed, then it can't really happen. But again, from a creationist standpoint, it does make sense that these huge, large land masses, um, arches and bridges were formed after the retreating of the water, a rapid erosive process happened. Um, and so there's a combination of things going on. There is the, again, the smaller arches that we have seen created in our time, as well as the destruction of the bigger ones, but again, we don't see the active formation of these huge ones anymore because they don't um, happen. Um, but again, because if you follow the thousands or millions, it wouldn't still be here. They would be destructed after that amount of time into sediment. So um, a little biblical thought there. I got a lot of that information off of a site called creation.com. 
I'm also a big fan of Answers in Genesis that answers some of these cool nature happenings from a biblical standpoint. So pass those little nuggets onto your kids. The heart of this is to have fun with the bridge, talk about center of gravity, talk about God's majesty, all things in the earth bring him glory um, and can be explained through his word.